There's Craig. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the seventh edition of the DX Dow community call. Uh, today, we're going to do a handful of um, run through a handful of the active DX Dow initiatives going on, a little bit of a lighter kind of contextual call, uh, a handful of things going on in the last little bit. So, uh, we'll have a bit of a discussion on those. Uh, and for the recording's sake, uh, namely, and a little bit of an update on the restructuring effort, governance stewards, and priorities board, uh, specifically. Um, and of course, the DXC monetary policy updates, uh, priorities board and monetary policy uh, meetings happening last week. Um, before we get into that, if you aren't familiar with how these calls work, uh, we determine a relevant topic and use it to generate art at the end, uh, making an associated poet for the following call. Uh, last call, we chatted uh, a little bit about the, uh, the NFBs collection, NFBs the queue. Um, so I actually ripped a prompt from Daiki um, that was, I already want to FOMO into this cube. Um, sorry, just changing the volume here. So that is this guy right here, which by participating in this chat, you can grab a copy of. Uh, you can also react directly to the image here if you want to make sure that you'll get in line for that uh, we actually don't have the claim codes quite yet so i imagine a little bit later today we'll be sending this out um we do take snapshots of course of the chat here um but better to just leave a reaction or some kind of message in the chat um yeah so that's uh, a little bit of an intro here uh like i mentioned a lighter kind of contextual call um and i want to kick it off with a little bit of an update on the restructuring effort um I think it was Friday, the day after the last meeting call, I gave a little summation of the current status of the uh, phase two proposal. Um, I put it together because there wasn't a formal recap in a little while, uh, I think maybe a month and a bit. Um, so I figured it'd be good to share on this call, uh, kind of the context of that um, and where that is moving. Um, and then of course, uh, we'll hand the mic to you, Chris, to go into a little bit more detail on some of those topics. Um, but first of all, there was five uh, past conditions in that uh, phase two proposal. Uh, so I'll kind of hop into each of them. First of which, a budgetary cycle. Um, DXDAO will implement a six month squad based budgetary cycle and shift contributor proposals to their respective squads. Um, I kind of note here, the process was largely completed. Um, squads are kind of transitioning to larger buckets or guilds, um, which were facilitating in-house through Project Dabi. Um, you can actually see on the form, um, uh, and pass to DXDAO governance each of those guild proposals and budgets uh, and what they look like. Uh, there's a little bit more info on that in a separate thread here, which I'll put in the chat. DXDAO configuration. Uh, next up, accountability councils. Uh, DXDAO will commit to the exploration of accountability councils within phase three, ultimately aiming to implement an intermediary step between execution and governance if feasible. Um, the primary action for this was to explore further what that could mean and how it could um, kind of move along the extent of governments, um, or I guess the clause is a commitment to further exploration. Um, so now we're kind of uh, moving into the skilled structure. Um, it's been a good time and Haney Fork has been facilitating a Mission Wardens uh, initiative, which um, maybe uh, I'll call back on you in a minute, Chris, so we can get through um, structurally the rest of the, the pieces here. Uh, but next up is the priorities board. The Excel will implement a priorities board and a democratic process of determining said priorities. Um, and I guess similarly to the, um, the mission wardens initiative, um, now that the guild structure is in place, it makes uh, it a little bit more clean uh, where and when all of these things fit together. Uh, so we have a little bit of a deeper understanding of the goals of the guilds. Um, so the priority board effort has been moving along uh, particularly well last week. More on that for Chris in a minute as well. Um, with the monthly monthly priority board check-in. Um, so we'll go back to you in a second. Uh, but next up is True North. DXDAO will formally establish its overarching vision as enable community freedom. Um, it did pass with strong language like establish, um, but the idea was to ascertain something that can be worked off of in phase three. Um, that's exactly what the Voice Guild has been doing uh, in these last few weeks. Um, I believe tomorrow will be the day uh, that we'll be giving a little presentation on mission vision uh, strategy and how we're going to get from A to B. Um, so tomorrow, actually same time uh, on the DXDAO Jitsi, which you should be able to find context to in the chats here. 
Um, and then where are we going? Uh, DXL will formally establish its direction as a decentralized pipeline for communities and look to prioritize a flagship product that interconnects current and future product initiatives. Um, I kind of noted in the original proposal, it's not a new idea by any means. Um, it's mainly pointing our focus to exploring it further uh, and understanding what it means. Um, so it's kind of an idea to this flagship and how can we interconnect the products uh, more cleanly under a single bucket, uh, which is something that is being explored and will be the final kind of puzzle piece uh, before a final phase three proposal. Um, at least that's what I know here. Um, there's a handful of deliverables um, that will allow DXDAO to make an informed decision on that um, and for the pursuit of the product focus. Um, and that's stuff that uh, we have a variety of teams working on right now. Uh, you know, general product market fit competition, et cetera, uh, and an operable wireframe are kind of the main things that I've been thinking about um, and I expect to be delivered within the month here. So yeah, that's a very general recap. Um, you can actually find the thread here for a little bit more detail, a lot of paraphrasing in this discussion. Um, but I will hand it off to you, Chris, uh, to chat a bit about the mission wardens and then priorities board. Thanks, Keenan. Um, yeah, so I guess like the three things of that that um, Candy Fork has been working on, that's myself and Ross G, is the mission wardens, the governance stewards, and the uh, priority boards. So just to give, uh, maybe let's start with the <clears throat> mission wardens, because those are the, uh, I guess, the, the furthest behind, or I guess the one that's still in development. So you can see here, it's a post on this kind of renamed from guild councils. And so I have a, a process for how they'll be nominated and kind of what the roles would be and how they would be compensated. Um, and I think the goal with this is um, actually now starting to try to send this out for feedback to people who may be interested in being a mission warden. So this is not passed as a proposal itself, but uh, I think it's at least in the phase that we can maybe get some feedback before we pass a proposal on whether this would be appealing. So I think the people that would be, um, you know, good candidates for this have some previous experience in DAOs and DeFi. Maybe they've served as advisors to other projects. Um, and, you know, maybe even some of them have like a investor background, like a VC or, or something. Um, like that, you could also have former contributors that want to stay involved in different ways, fill this out. Um, so yeah, I think right now we're in the um, feedback phase in terms of sending it to different potential uh, candidates. Um, and I think specifically uh, on kind of my to do is doing this as it relates to ETH Denver, because I think there may be some opportunity to to uh, get some people involved in the DXDAO community through this uh, program. And I think, uh, yeah, ETH Denver is a good opportunity for that. Um, so that's the, the first one is the, the mission wardens there. You can see the, the posts there. Um, and then the next one, I guess, going in terms of uh, the level of, of completeness is the governance stewards program. So this is actually right now a live proposal. Um, you can vote on it here. So this would uh, basically establish the, the, the program here. And governance stewards are a way of engaging smaller rep holders who are not full-time contributors and incentivizing them to participate in, in governance. Um, so this would actually pay people, pay rep holders to participate in governance. So the allocation is, I think, uh, $8,250 in USD and then the same amount in one year, that's a DXD for the entire program. So a single individual would be eligible for, um, I think it's about $333 a month um, of that if they participate that. Now, the thresholds that would need to be met in order to participate are to one, attend nine governance calls and two, vote in at least one proposal per month. Um, so obviously this can be gamed a, a little bit. And so I don't think this is necessarily a program or a structure that could be as widely used in other DAOs, but because DXDAO has a unique rep structure, we already know that there's a, a small number of uh, addresses that have above 0.1%. And so it's kind of hard to, um, you know, civil attack this or do something to game the system here. So these are the initial thresholds there and I think are, are good to get um, started. Um, it'd be great for people on this call. Um, maybe you attend this call and you've been active in the 
Discord, and so you've got, gotten some Discord rep boost um, in some way. Maybe you've gotten some rep from proposals that you've uh, passed on Gnosis Chain or uh, or on Mainnet. Um, and so anyone that is above 0.1% on Gnosis Chain or Mainnet can participate in that. Um, there's some instructions for how you can apply for that. Basically, um, just posting some information on the DAO talk thread of the program. Um, and then the operations guild will be managing it and kind of taking attendance at the different governance calls and then also um, yeah, tracking the, the votes itself. So I think this is a, a good experiment in terms of seeing how we can get a broader set of stakeholders um, involved in governance rather than just those that are kind of working uh, and contributing full time to DSDAO. So that's the, the second one. And then the third one is the uh, priorities board, um, which is now live. So I will share the first, we just had the first um, call of the priorities board last uh, Thursday, Tuesday. Yeah, I think Tuesday. Uh, and so just for a uh, refresher, the priorities board is meant to be a way that um, rep hold governance rep holders and DXD holders can signal what their priorities are um, outside of just the funding uh, requirement, funding mechanisms that happen through the budgets. And so this is meant to be something that is revisited. I think we could do either every month. I think the way it's set up now that you can, um, it's actually just a rolling basis. So um, we had the first meeting last Tuesday to go over, you know, the initial structure, kind of answer some questions on what these different priorities um, will, will be. Um, there's a lot of um, growing pains, I think, in figuring out exactly how this would work. And so I think we're, we're, we're figuring that now. But the, the cool thing is we have a, a live product called, I guess, ESP. Remember this again. I think it's electronic signaling uh, can't, proposal something. I can't remember. It's a really... Really cool. Um, I'll put a link to it here. Really cool um, DAP that was built by by Lewis to uh, be able to allow governance to signal its intentions on the priorities using the um, uh, using the amount of rep and DXD that they have. So it's you, know, you can imagine sometimes we do polls and DAO talk, but polls and DAO talk are just basically like anyone who has a DAO talk account. But in this one here there is actually like a set of points that are assigned to addresses based upon how much reputation they have. And then you can appoint those, uh, you can direct those points to the different priorities that you uh, favor as a, as, a, as a rep and DXD holder. So it's a way of, of signaling uh, to that. Um, I could see this being a popular way in general of, of signaling or doing polling of, of governance without having to do things uh, through an on-chain proposal, but it's kind of a, a, a quick way of getting on-chain sentiment without having to go through the formal proposal process. And also it gives us a little bit more flexibility because right now, if you do the proposals, you can really only just do yes or no there, but we can have a little bit more flexibility. Um, yeah, and Luigi says, so you vote on what's good. I think you vote on what is, uh, what you think DeekStyle should be prioritizing with its resources, with its time. Um, and so right now there is no, uh, uh, enforcement of this, right? This is just a signal from the governance uh, community, but I think it's another way of unlocking some of that signal that um, I think it is hard to get um, because things can kind of be so in the weeds when we're operating day to day. So I think like, you know, I can, you can look at what I think, I mean, what a, kind of Caney Fork voted on these um, and you could kind of actually see the different different ones. And so this is actually for Deke's DAO overall. And then it also has that for each um, specific guild here. And so like, you know, I think I voted the number one, I think priority for Deke's DAO is governance 2.0, just because I think incorporating um, DXD holders informally into governance is still like a top priority. So I would like to see resources um, devoted to that. Um, and then, yeah, also it's a way of being like, okay, well, we've got these different products, right? Right now there's um, Davi, there's Carrot, there's Swapper, um, but in terms of right now resources of say Voice Guild, like where should the priorities be? And I think for for Voice Guild and and, and some of the other um, contributors, it's sometimes too hard to know whether you are doing like whether what the DAO itself prioritizes and what you should be um, working on. And so I think this signaling mechanism is a way of 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 accomplishing that. Um, and I'm just looking kind of this is a 
Yeah, I mean, Lewis is the is the dev that's building it, and Sky's been working really great with them. So we are kind of hacking some of this stuff together. So right now, the DXD component actually needs to give you needs to be manually added. But I think the signal that is used or is automatically on there right now is any rep holder that um, uh, any rep holder that had um, a rep on Gnosis chain. It's like the Gnosis chain amount, and that was automatically included in the DXD component. It needs to be manu manually added, but I'm hoping this is yeah like the beginning of you know figuring out these things. And as I said, like this could be used for polling more broadly. I'm thinking I'm about sorry. this like the monetary policy committee too. Same thing there. Like it's a it's a tool for that. I haven't sat down with this yet either. But Luigi is asking. I'm also wondering and trying to figure out right now how exactly the points calculated. Is there some way to visualize that? Yeah, I mean, so they're based on your rep amount. So like. Um, I think it's four per, I think 4% on Gnosis chain equals a hundred points. Uh, exactly. So 4% yeah. rep on Gnosis chain is a hundred voting points, uh, capped at 4%. So if you have over 4%, you still only get 4%, hundred points. And then if you have DXD and you want to participate, uh, there's a form on the forum or you can reach out and the equivalent would be if you have a thousand DXD that's equal to four percent rep and you get a hundred points for that as well yeah and i think it's cool to see people like want you know claim your rep and participate because i think that's one of the i mean i think the people i'm looking at the the bright pink i see from luigi and, and sid mead so knowing that they have been so active in the um in the community and kind of participating in a lot of different ways um so I think we're, it's, we're trying to come up with different ways to bring more community members into governance and get that input and decisions. So I think like obviously going back to the governance stewards, that's one way of actually like paying those folks to stay engaged. But I think this is like another way of getting some additional signal. Uh, and the cool thing about this is we can, if this one is based specifically off of those parameters that Sky just said, but we could um, potentially do this for lots of different things. You could see some things that maybe we wanna give um, I don't know what what addresses would want points based on like maybe their POAPs that they've attended for different calls or something like that. We could we could use this for that. So I think it's a really cool tool. And yeah, if I'm being uh, I guess honest, I think that I'm bullish on this tool for for DAOs broadly. So I think this really is an opportunity to productize this and not just use it for um, DXDAO. That's a great idea. It's like an extra you know five voting points for each DXDAO related co-op you have on Gnosis Chain. And the cool thing about the system is it's very modular. It's built on this MUD framework. So all of these additional like point schemes, I guess call them schemes or strategies, you can uh, build, anyone can build these separately, um, plug them in. Uh, it's, well, it's not permissionless, but people can build and suggest new ideas and these can be used and plugged in to this voting system. So POAPs is actually a, a really good idea for that. Some additional points for POAPs. Yeah, man, POAPs or POAP would be 50 DXD. <laughs> people yeah, have always wondered just... what POAPs are for, but yeah, this is a, this is a really good use case. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, thinking about giving people that had, I think we had like the DxD one year anniversary POAP and you know, things like that um, would be interesting to include in that. Um, yeah, and just on the modular nature of that, I, I don't fully understand the architecture, but Lewis did a pretty uh, technical rundown of it on the priorities board monthly check-in last Tuesday. So if you're interested, um, you can check out the video for that. Cool, cool. Yeah, thank you very much for the context here. Ross's POAP list in the chat. Um, I guess a good segue, because um, we were chatting about Denver a minute ago. Um, Sky, if you want to share a little bit about what uh, soft plans DXL has going into ETH Denver, uh, that would be fantastic. Sure. Uh, so you think ETH Denver and events in general in 2023 are a slightly different approach than um, maybe what we saw in 2022. A more targeted, uh, efficient strategy as part of 
DX DAO budgeting and things. Um, contributors, full time or contributors to DX DAO are getting you know certain uh, limited stipends to attend events. So people have to if well to have costs covered. People are going to be more selective on the events they're going to. <clears throat> it's appearing that instead of having like large uh, group of contributors and community members going to certain events. It's more like a smaller set of contributors that are attending events maybe more regionally. So I think there's five, six or seven people from the DX style community that are planning to be in Denver around East Denver. And it's actually, well, it's so, you know, build week, build week and the surrounding events. It's, you know, actually more like a week or, or more. Um, it's a, it's a big, it's the biggest ETH ever, ever. There's a whole set of events the week leading up to ETH Denver. DXDAO is not, you know, as we did last year, we're not sponsoring ETH Denver. We're not, we don't have any bounties in the hackathon or anything, but we'll have a small set of people there. And so we wanted to part participate or organize some, be a part of an event that we could invite, um, partners, uh, community members uh, or colleagues to um, and so the event that there's a the yeah there's a meta cartel and friends event that has a bunch of good organizations like consensus and hedgy uh, and meta cartel ventures and um, I think dip Dow a few other uh, a few different communities that that DXDAO is going to also be a part of that event. And so we can invite um, people that yeah, we want to meet up with and talk to, to the, and around that event. The, the whole week leading up to ETH Denver, there's a whole bunch of events that we're going to have different people participate in, I think. There's a Gitcoin community gathering, which is like a two and a half day event in Boulder. There's a DAOs at Denver, which is similar to the DAO NYC event organized by Tally and a few others on the 28th. There's, an, there's another DAO Planet event called DAO Denver 2023, which DXDAO participated in last year. Uh, there's another shelling point uh, in the Thursday before ETH Denver. Uh, there's a shared security summit, um, I think, Polka, uh, polka dot related and then there's uh eth denver which is friday saturday and sunday of that week and so the idea is to yeah have a smaller subset of contributors there but still make a as big of an impact as we can among the community that shows up we'll hopefully be on participating on lots of different panels or talks and things across different events um and some will be uh our products some related some will be maybe DAOs and legal entities related uh so trying to get involved in as many of those discussions as possible um and connecting with potential contributors and sharing the progress and changes that DXDAO has made uh all positive things that we can do during the ETH Denver period. So yeah, that's the summary of the Denver week. If you are, yeah, if you're going to be there, if community members or anyone else, let, yeah, reach out, let, let any of us know you'll be there and we can get you involved in any of the things that we're planning to be a part of. And Sid will be a shelling point. Oh, sweet. Yeah, shelling point will be just shelling point or also shelling point. Yeah, I mean, imagine if you're coming to Denver for shelling point, you'll be there for the main event too. Perfect. Great. Yeah, cool, cool. Thanks, Sky, for the context here. 
um, going to rip Chris back onto the stage. Uh, would like to chat a little bit about uh, the monetary policy meeting from last week and any findings that we had from that, or if you have a little recap or something to give out here. And that will wrap up our kind of contextual overview for the week here. Context. Context and context. Um, yeah, so um, we had the first uh, monthly meeting of like for DXT Monetary Policy Committee. Um, so this is just intending to carve out a specific governance time to focus on DXT related issues. So that comes from uh, liquidity, comes from you know maybe the, the treasury makeup and lots of different things. Um, so this per this meeting here, you know, focused on really three things. The first is looking at the execution of the new DXT token model proposal so far. So that has um, been through some buybacks and then also several um, DXT member balancer redemptions that have gone through over the last month. Um, and so we talked a little bit about those. And I think the numbers, uh, they're a little out of date now because this is a couple days ago when this went through. But um, yeah, if you look, there's been about six million dollars maybe a little bit more than that with ETH price rising that has been uh used for member balancer uh redemptions and so this has led to uh a contraction of 8600 dxd um so that means the circling supply is just over 25,000 uh dxd now so if you just kind of look at the uh, the purchase price of that i think it comes down to like a 690 dollar DXD purchase for for all of that now so that's uh, a bit below the 70 percent number there so you can see how that was purchased i think at a, at a good price there so that was the uh, member balancer re redemptions there was also a pretty cool 400 weth order for DXD through cowswap that was executed over the weekend um so this was i think the first time we'd used this liquidity order um, which allows for partial fills Still some kinks to be working out there because it doesn't actually give the surplus to DXD out. So at first it like acquired some some DXD um, from the liquidity pools, but that um, surplus was actually not given to DXD out. And then the other thing that was kind of confusing was it was hard to access the order unless you had a certain amount of size. Um, but in the end, the order kind of cleared. There was um, yeah, it cleared at the, at the price set 0.46. ETH uh, for DXD, and so that was pretty cool. And there's another one that is up in the uh, queue right now that I think would pass in, in eight and a half days there. And so we could have the same way there. So that's another tool that is in the in the uh, monetary policy toolkit. And then um, there's also been the addition of DXDAO owned liquidity or protocol owned liquidity. So now there's, I think, about $350,000, $400,000 worth of DXD liquidity on Swapper. So that has kind of facilitated some more instant um, buys and actually just looking at some of the data on that and planning to um, yeah, submit additional proposals for that that would increase that amount to provide some additional on-chain uh, liquidity there. And then, yeah, so that was kind of looking at the execution of the DXD token model so far. Um, and then the uh, two other topics um, focused on really one is the discussion on the long term model. So I think if you look at the current execution, we have the price floor guarantee at 70% that can be um, very easily executed on or executed on by DXDAO now. But there is, you know, what is the long term way of, of driving value? And how do we you know move, I think, the NAV um, how do we move DXD above 70% trading of NAV? So um, some interesting ideas presented uh, from, from Ross G that you can see in the, um, in the post there. Um, some, some of the slides are there and also you can check out the video there, but really trying to make it so you know, the DXD token isn't just a way of, you know, it doesn't just have value, you can kind of get it, but how do we have it as a signal for other for how the market feels about like Deke Stow's future prospects. How does it create like a good feedback loop where if Deke Stow is doing a good job of allocating its resources, people will purchase DXC and, and, and vice versa. So whether this is through inverse bonds or some other method, we're kind of exploring yeah, the long term options for that there. And then the last thing that was um, discussed was you know, looking at some policy changes to the current system. So um, this is specific to looking at the liquidity 
weight ratio, uh, which is probably better than the liquidity discount multiplier, I'm realizing. Um, but for non-core assets, this is ENS, Swapper, and GNO. Their contribution to Treasury NIV has been discounted. So originally, they were all set at 25% of, of, of their value. So it, it would mean that it wouldn't, if there's, I think there's like $3 million worth of Swapper in Deke's Dow's Treasury. Uh, and so it's not having all that $3 million contribute, but only 25%. And the discussion was uh, about lowering Swapper's liquidity weight ratio to 10% and then raising ENS's liquidity rate ratio to 50%. The idea being, if you look at Swapper liquidity, it is very, very uh, illiquid. I think you can purchase maybe like three, $400 before you incur 5% slippage. So I don't think that number is, is very um, accurate to be used for Treasury NAV. Plus it also opens it up to manipulation. So if you, not giving anyone ideas, but if you wanted to do some Geeks D redemption balancers, you could, prop up the, the swapper price pretty cheaply and then use that as a way of increasing the amount that your DXD redemption balancer would take. So this one would lower it to 10% um, because I think it's still important that, yeah, swapper is a contribution to that. And I think uh, there's some uh, ideas there. And yeah, there's a separate post about that and some good discussion on adjusting any of those there. So yeah, those are the, the things uh, discussed at the monetary policy uh meeting last thursday and there will be another one at the end of the month and so now we can get to these pictures and, and things that, that everyone is playing with i like the context <laughs> what is there's that like uh that artist that does the like squares and black lines some like modernist i don't know now i'm gonna google for that Well, while you're Googling Chris, uh, just for those of you here in the call and or listening on the recording, that formally ends our contextual segment, a little bit of a smaller, uh, more tight-knit group today. Uh, we will be moving on to a little bit of a, a fun art generation segment. So just a little bit of tight camaraderie here. Um, those of you listening, uh, feel free to step on out now. Uh, we'll just be some lighter chatter here on out. Uh, and thank you very much for joining. Otherwise, uh, stick around. We're going to have a little bit of fun here for the next uh, maybe 15 minutes or so. Artist squares black lines yellow. I was just saying, like, it actually worked. I don't know if ChatGPT would have been able to do that, but like the Google search for what I was trying to get actually came up with the right person. So <laughs> I had no idea what this name was though. So I was not, did not actually know him. Daiki says, ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT is pretty scary. Cool, cool. All right, what should our topic be today? Cat GBT is kind of scary sometimes. Go for a uh, AI uprising style that might be relevant to this conversation. I can't believe Luigi says I'm bad at mid journey. Chris, I think you can say a prompt and then in the style of uh, Piet, 
Right, right. That's what I was. That was originally what I was thinking. Is how do you? Yeah. Like. Why? What do I do again? Mid journey. Uh, slash imagine. Okay, there you go. I'll run Tykus here. Context, context. You're missing one. Yeah, I just, just didn't know if ChatGPT would. <laughs> Too many contacts for them. Ooh. A little too hazy for, I feel like, surrealist. Ooh. See how it comes through. It might not know. Artist, maybe. Or maybe it just doesn't know how to translate. You know what? The trees are very... not too dissimilar from the style. Bottom right is Jay Powell. <laughs> That's funny. We should run with that. An upscale. We can, uh, we can vote for that one. You know, it's a bit rugged, but I do like this one, Chris. Maybe the bottom right for uh, the ice storm. Yeah. I mean, like, ice storm, I feel like, is like a good thing for AI to, like, generate something. I imagine that haze is going to... Yeah. I'm into the J-PAL. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I need to see Jay Powell parkour now. <laughs> Doesn't look too soft though. It looks like it will be rough. Yeah, it knew the Fed. That was pretty good. Right. It looks like he's going to land, but it's like not because he's being careful, but more because he's very nimble. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe is like a good metaphor of <laughs> like what's going on now. We just don't know how he's going to land. My J. Powell parkour didn't grab much, J. Powell. Yeah. Reality is not equal to expectations. I love whatever's going on in the top left of your original one. It's like J. Powell with wings on a boat, right? Yeah, and then there's somewhere. a fish for something like... Yeah, that's a good one, actually. Right, Jerome is better. I should do that. I 
How is, um, I don't know what Mid Journey's policy with real people is. I know um, the OpenAI guys don't want any real life depictions, but. Man, I've, I've got to say, I have been enjoying the, just like the, the issues or the like conundrum of AI bias and just how people deal with it. Just I think it's very interesting and there's like no right answer. Um, and it's just very, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I remember when, um, God, I'm forgetting the name, OpenAI's image generation, it first came out in like the racial bias is a big thing. They took it down right away actually for two months, I think. Hmm. Dolly, yeah, right. There's too many now, it's hard to keep track. This might be the rarest Pepe. Claymore sword. I never thought about that. You could just make your own Pepe. <laughs> There is no Pepe. He's all around. One of the better ones. You know, you could play it off. Oh, yeah, that, that one's very good. Yeah, I think this one is winner. Fuse and scratching his head. Yeah, I do like it. It's almost removed the J Pow of it all. Oh my god. I guess drawn in MS Paint is the, the missing picture. These Pepe's are terrifying. It could be, if we vote it. Where's Pepe in this bear? I don't see him. I think it got confused because of it needs comment or comma, sorry. Uh, Pepe the Frog and then comma to differentiate it. So I think it, it thinks it's like Pepe Bear Market Basher. He does look like he's uh, in big business here, though. The bottom right there. I like how I put uh, Pepe the Frog depicted as a judge in a courtroom, and one of them had just chose to make him. Well, I guess, you know, he's at the judge stand here, but he's looking like a criminal. None of these are real. They are rare, though. <laughs> I really like this one, to be honest. It's not a uh, Pepe style, but. Yeah. What's the little, is it like a four leaf clover on the top of his head? It's like made of, made of plants, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Chris. I also think the, the, the third one. On the Pepe the Frog is a bear market buster are just funny. The third and fourth one are just down on their luck. You could probably... 
could probably refine the prompt a little bit and make true Pepe's. I think it's the MS Paint that's throwing it off. Uh, I do pay for Mid Journey. I think I'm the only one, though. I do too, sucker. Oh, everyone's paying for it. Never mind. <laughs> Mid Journey, I, I go through like this ebb and flow where I use it and I'm incredibly impressed. And then I try to dig into something else and I just can't get it and I get frustrated. And then just another gem pops up and I'm back to being impressed. But Luigi says I suck at prompts, so that might be it. Let's throw one or two more in here, and then we can call it a day. Rolling up here to the top of the hour. Asking Mid Journey to draw context. Yeah, but it's fun to see what it'll come up with. It doesn't mean I'm expecting anything in particular. That's true. <laughs> Wayne, your second depiction with the comma, instantly more context to what I think you were thinking. Yeah, but it looks scary. Jesus. Especially the top left. I don't know what's up with the yeah the top right one, but the both the ones on the left look like closer to what I'd be expecting. Oh my god! <laughs> look at Ross's prompt. Oh my goodness! Too real. Too much, man. <laughs> Like, I don't want to see a live-action Pepe movie. <laughs> or like a claymate, uh, maybe claymation. Like a baby chap of the hut, yeah. <laughs> How would you depict the style of Pepe, like drawn? I guess it is MS Paint. But MS Paint, like, references for it are generally too rugged, I think. Oh, it's taking it way too literally here. I'm in upscale. The scariest one, Ross. <laughs> I mean, drawn style actually isn't too bad, but it's not quite Pepe. It's like an artistic depiction. Cartoon? The cartoon's getting close, I think. I've uh, I've tried to copy the uh, the nerd Pepe you put, Luigi, and I think I've just made another monstrosity. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Oh my god! It took the scary image and made it way worse.
All right, guys. We could probably leave it there. There's a couple more generations coming through, uh, so we'll let them go through. Feel free to make any more that you're kind of finishing the thought process on here. Uh, we'll do a little bit of upscaling a bit later today and get the vote ready. Um, in the meantime, uh, you could sign up to the next call, uh, call number eight here, whatever this uh, artwork we vote for. Uh, you'll be able to claim that pull up on that call. I put the event link in the chat here. You can sign up ahead of time, get a ping when it happens, make sure you get your POAP. app, uh, but I'll shoot a ping out later today uh, surrounding the voting um, and a little bit more upscaling. Uh, might inject a couple, uh, see what uh, terrible SID prompt I can find to make him look dumb, as is tradition. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Hope it was a fun, lighter little call. Uh, we'll be seeing you next next week, uh, two weeks from now. It's on February the 16th for call number eight. Uh, thanks again, and we'll be seeing you. Cheers. Bye, all. Thank you. Cheers.